What's up, people? My name is Jeffrey Kaminsky, and all the training which you're doing, whether it's in the weight room or for your sport, is creating damage to your body with the hopes that you can recover from that damage and come back stronger and better at your sport. And most of that recovery is going to come from your sleep and your nutrition. But once you have that squared away, there's all sorts of things you can do to further improve your recovery, whether it's saunas, ice baths, foam rolling, massage gun, Anavar, whatever. But I'm here to tell you that all of those things pale in comparison to the recovery benefits from this one thing. But it will cost you absolutely nothing because lacrosse balls are cheap and easily accessible. And that is the first benefit of lacrosse balls is the fact that they're relatively affordable compared to other recovery products. In order to get a good quality foam roller, it's a good 30 bucks down the drain. For a massage gun, you're talking at least 100 going into that $150, $200 range. And stuff like that can happen. Whereas a lacrosse ball, it's indestructible and you can get a whole lot more out of it. Now, personally, I have never had to pay for one of these because you can find them everywhere. Your local track, your local field, your park, your neighborhood. People leave them wherever. Just take one, make sure you clean it off, and you're good to go. You don't got to pay all the money for something that's going to break. The second benefit to lacrosse balls is you can bring this thing anywhere. You don't have to worry about TSA confusing us for a Glock 19 or the girls on your floor asking to borrow it because their legs are sore. You can put this in a pocket if you need to. I keep one in all of my bags, whether that's my lifting bag, my wrestling bag, my school backpack, wherever. You can keep this with you all the time. It's not going to take up any space. The third benefit to lacrosse balls is it's going to help you increase your mobility. And it's going to do this by utilizing something called self-myofascial release or SMR which is just a sciencey way of saying you're going to roll on this until it hurts and massage your muscles with it. This is mainly going to attack something called fascia, which is a type of connective tissue that runs all over your muscles and throughout your entire body. It's supposed to be nice and neat and smooth and glide over those muscles, but every now and then it gets gunked up, leading to these things called adhesions, which restrict your range of motion. Rolling on this guy is going to hurt, but it's going to get those adhesions to loosen up so that the connective tissue can glide smoothly again. This is also going to get overly active, overly tight muscles to relax by stimulating a type of receptor in your muscles called Golgi tendon organs, which are basically a protective mechanism that when it feels too much tension on the muscle, that it causes the muscle to relax instead of tearing. So that way when you're benching with Larry Wheels and he has another plate, when you know you can't bench that other plate, you fail the rep instead of this happening. We can simulate that exact same response with this. So we not only get the fascia to loosen up, we also get the muscles to relax, increasing our mobility two ways. The fourth benefit is that whatever area you're rolling around on this with will have increased blood flow afterwards. And blood is what carries the nutrients that lead to healing. So rolling on this will lead to faster recovery. The fifth benefit is you can modulate the pressure with this. If your tissue is really, really bad and you have to start lightly rolling it like this, you can do that. Then you can progress it to going up against a wall, doing that, adding a little more pressure, lying down on it, adding even more pressure, or if you're really masochistic, adding weight. So you can easily scale it to your level of pain tolerance. And if your stuff is really sore and really tight, it's gonna be very painful at first, but it will get better the longer you do it. Now I'm going to show you some of the things that I think are important to roll out and how I usually do it. First thing we're going to roll out is the bottom of our feet. And speaking of fascia, there's a line of fascia that goes all the way from the back of your head, down your back, down the back of your legs, all the way down to the bottom of your feet. So if anything in that line is tight, it can affect things at some other point in the line. So if your feet are super tight, it can affect all the way up to your hamstrings, your lower back, wherever. So if you have really tight hamstrings and you can't touch your toes, try this for a little bit. After you retest, you should be able to reach farther. Especially if you like are, are a runner or something, do a lot of running, try that out. Not that I run that much, where's my knees? All right, on the floor, we got our calves. You have two main muscles in the calves, the gastrocs, which are the higher part, and the soleus, which goes down here. So if your ankles are super tight, more likely than not, the soleus is what's super tight. So I go a little lower and roll back and forth getting all different angles you can you can tilt both ways like that even if the soleus is not the problem going up to the gastrocs when those guys have adhesions that can lead to tight ankles as well 
He's also crossed the knee, so if these are super tight, it might be giving you some knee pain. This is even more important to tilt side to side because you have the head on this side and the one over here. I usually don't get a whole lot of hamstring problems, but you could just roll over it like that. My main problem is going to be on the quads, and I like putting in that little pocket right there and just lying down on it. And it is always a very pleasant experience doing this. You can even go lower down to the VMO area, but that usually isn't as big of a problem for myself. Something that is usually a problem is the IT band. But if you just try to do a side plank on it, that's usually gonna be pretty unbearable to start out with. So what I like to do is just lie down like this. You can put a pillow there if you need it. Putting the ball in there and just rolling out your IT band that way. Something a lot of people are going to have is tight hips. Rolling out your quads are gonna help a little bit with that. There's also stuff on the back side, like your glutes, you can roll out. These are usually very tender for most people, so start out slow. There's also going to be a few spots on the side of your hips, like right in this area, you can roll out. It's going to affect your internal and external rotation. So starting there, I'm usually pretty externally rotated, so this is pretty tight on me most of the time. If you want to work on your internal a little more, go a little more to the side, work on all that stuff in the hip pocket. Just stay off the bones, stay on the muscles. Next up is our lats. Put it in there, lean against the wall, roll up and down on it. You can even pin your body weight into it and just lift your arm up and down overhead. If you have really tight, painful shoulders, this is probably very tight on you. Or if you're a meathead, this is also probably very tight an area you should hit very often. Now we go on to the pecs. I like doing it against a post like this, so I can just put it, the ball, there and roll up, all up and down. Getting all parts of the chest, upper, lower, mid, whatever you want. I think it's easier doing it with a post like this than against a wall, because you can put your head through here and not get smacked in the face by the wall. So you can do the same thing like you did with the lats, raising your arms up and down, side to side. It's gonna loosen this guy up. I also like rolling out most of the bicep because this guy feeds into the shoulder. So if it gets super tight, it can lead to some problems in there. So put it in there, do the exact same thing, just roll that guy out. Pretty self-explanatory. Something else you can do is take two lacrosse balls, tape these guys together, and make something called a peanut. That way, make a little nut sack that can roll and hit the muscles along your spine, but not actually hit the bones themselves. So there you have it. There's everything you need to know about the lacrosse ball and how to use it. Hopefully you got something valuable out of this video. And if you did, make sure to leave a comment, like the video, subscribe, and click the bell notification for more content whenever I decide to make it. I'll see you later.